You were probably told by your child's teacher to expect a change this school year to Common Core English and Math. But what is Common Core and why the switch? To help us understand, we're joined by Jenny Roof from the Stanford Graduate School of Education. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, thank you. So what is Common Core as a principal? Well, Common Core is the nation's attempt to unify what um, education all kids in all 50 states get. Mm -hmm. And Common Core is actually a set of standards. It's not a curriculum. It's a list of what we teach and a list of how we want students to interact with that curriculum as well. And this was brought up as a voluntary adoption. And in the case of Common Core Math, it was adopted by 45 out of 50 states. So again, the goal really is to unify, in the case of math, what mm -hmm. we call mathematics in the United States and make sure that kids in Alaska and kids in Alabama are encountering the same material. I see, okay, so let's get to exactly how it works because I asked you previously to, you know, what is the difference between what we would call traditional math or what a lot of my generation learned in terms of um, ad addition and subtraction and common core math. So why don't you give us an example of, I, and you're gonna sort of redefine what traditional means in terms of math, right? Sure. So all of us grew up, well, all of us parents grew up probably seeing problems like this. And uh -huh. <clears throat> this is probably still coming home on your kids' homework as well. And if you learned this in the traditional manner, you probably put a three here right, and, and you carried the one. Carry the one. And then you put a two here uh -huh. and carried the one. Right. And then we have a six here. So hopefully we're all in agreement that this is 623. Right. <coughs> now, I'm sorry, I have to cough. No, that's fine. <coughs> Hoping that can be edited out. Okay. <laughs> so um, what you may see your student do. Uh -huh. And this is an example of how common core thinking works, right? Exactly. All right. So students may see multiple methods for solving problems like this. And ideally, students are actually going to be generating many of those methods themselves, and those methods will be discussed in classes. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the biggest differences between the way that we learn math traditionally and the way that the Common Core is asking us to shift our thinking about math. Right. The math really hasn't changed here. This is the exact same problem. Traditionally, we believed that math existed here. What we're asking um, teachers and students and parents to think about now is that math has to be constructed individually for each kid. They have to be able to make sense and make meaning of this problem. And I think one of the, the great illustrations you had was like you were asking us, you know, why do you carry this one over here? And it's not really something that we can articulate. Mm -hmm. It's just that's the way we were taught. You carry the one and then you add this column, right? That's a really good example, and I'd like to come back to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. So your student might bring home something that looks like this and then do something that looks a little strange to you, like say, well, I know I have 400s and 100, right. so I know that that's 500. Okay. And I've added all my 100s, so I know this is the 10s column, and I have 5 10s and 6 10s, and that's 11 10s, but I know that I can say that as 110. Yep. And now I know that I have 6 and 7, and so that's 13. And I have to still add all of these together so I can see that I have 623. And what's kind of nice is that I'm in agreement with the answer that we came up with previously. Right. So that's good news. But here's what was actually happening when we were carrying the 1, which mm -hmm. is a phrase that we're used to. We added 6 and 7 and we got 13, but we had to put our 3 in the 1s column, and we had 10, ten 1s left over, so we renamed it and we put a one in here so we were keeping track of it. Right. And you can see that process is repeated when we have an extra 100 in this case, and so we put it in the hundreds column. Mm -hmm. Now ideally, what could happen in your child's classroom or at your dinner table, if that's where you do homework together, right. is that you could have a discussion about how this solution method is connected to this solution method. How are they similar, how are they different, mm -hmm. and um, how are they tracking the same things? Well, then let's illustrate that, because you have a great way of illustrating how we integrate the two, right? Okay. And why we should be doing that. So let's go to, to take this equation off, All right. right? So let's go back to what we think of as traditional math, the mm -hmm. things that are dear to us, sacred, familiar, the fun math that we know and love. And we might think of that as being something kind of like a spiral. Let's get a brush back up here. That was a good one. And spirals are important in math 
because they imply that what we learn in kindergarten we actually come back around to. So we learn to count and that's going to help us when we learn to add and that's going to help us when we learn to add fractions and later on in algebra and so on and so forth. Right. We can think about this as the rules of math, the how we get our answers. Mm -hmm. And for many, many of us, this is all we learned in mathematics. What Common Core Math is asking us to do is to think about another spiral that comes along with this. And so this spiral we could think of as understanding. And math teachers and mathematicians might call this conceptual knowledge. This mm -hmm. would be procedural knowledge and this is conceptual knowledge. And every time we make a connection between two different methods and get our kids talking about math, what they're doing is they're building these connections between the rules of math and the understanding of math, between procedures and concepts. And mm -hmm. it's that deep conceptual knowledge that builds a robust and strong understanding of math. It's what helps us become creative problem solvers. And that's a very important 21st century skill. And in fact, Let's touch on that a little bit. I mean, uh, is that basically, I asked you before, what is the metric by which everyone is hoping this will show up? You know, the, the, how, in what way are we going to say later on Common Core really improved the way that kids learn? That's a really good question. So I'm actually a researcher, and you're going to see all kinds of researchers trying to answer that question. But in terms of teachers, parents, and students who need quicker feedback, mm -hmm. one of the things that is also coming along with the adoption of Common Core are the Common Core assessments. And those assessments look different than the kinds of com uh, assessments we saw with, for example, No Child Left Behind. Right. We've heard a lot about teaching to the test and right. how that's been damaging in terms of focusing really on these rules and not on that deep understanding. Mm -hmm. The new assessments that are coming with Common Core are designed to look for deep understanding, flexible problem solving, as well as being able to get answers because those still matter. <laughs> so, you know, if you're going to build a bridge, at some point you need to know how long to make the I-beam. So right. that does still matter. Um, so having those assessments at the end um, means that everything ideally should be lining up that way and so the quizzes and tests and the homework that your student is bringing home should ideally align with this idea of looking at how well a student has shown deep understanding right but in a more subtle way and again this is something you can do at your dinner table and mm -hmm. something that hopefully will be happening in your students classroom it's that discussion piece. It's when kids tell us what's going on in their heads here mm -hmm. that <clears throat> tells us what they know about math. And it's not just rote and repetition. Exactly. That's coming out. All right, Dear Jenny, thank you so much. You really illustrated uh, Common Core well for us, I well, think. thank you. So still looking for help to understand Common Core, try visiting uq.org. And you might also try visiting the National Council of Teachers and Mathematics website at nctm.org. That's all we have for today. Of course, all guest information from today's show can be found on our website at ktvu.com. Go to the KTVU TV36 menu tab and look for community. And please join us on Facebook for a look behind the scenes of Bay Area People. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you again next week right here on Bay Area People. <laughs>